Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the next session. It will be about serverless with KMLK and OpenGIF. The stage is yours. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so myself, Selen Singh, I am a consultant at Red Hat. And along with me, I have Vasa. Yeah, hi Vasa. Oh, uh, I think uh, she uh, should be back. Okay, fine. Uh, no worries. Uh, so, yeah, here we are to start with uh, serverless with Camel K and OpenShift. So, let's see uh, what are the agenda for this talk. So, we'll, we'll try to understand what is serverless. Serverless with OpenShift or it can be any Kubernetes cluster. What is Camel K? Versa will give you a walkthrough of what is Camel K and its Camel K architecture. And we'll have a demo on top of that. Let's see uh, what is serverless. Okay. So uh, the first time when I heard about this word serverless, I thought, is it something like uh, application without server? And I was totally wrong. So what does the serverless means where you do not have to manage your app, manage your server. You don't have to worry about your resource allocation of your servers. All those things will be taken care on demand. And what does the CNCF says about serverless? It says about the serverless computing refers to a concept of building and running your application that do not require a server management. You do not have to do your server management. You do not have to worry about whether what is the CPU consumption, what is the RAM consumption uh, of my application server. It will be always fulfilled about your demand. And you only focus uh, to developing your application. So how serverless with OpenShift? So serverless on top of OpenShift has been provided with the help of Knative. Knative is an open source project. What does the Knative does? It provides a layer between uh, the infra as well as from the developer perspective. Like every developer, the, whenever, whenever I talk and discuss to a developer, the first challenge or first issues what they know, like, hey, I'm developing my application, but why I should learn those configuration which is required for an infrastructure? Like, how my application is running, how I have to configure my application, what are those configuration, why I should worry about those configuration. There has to be some easy way. And that is what Knative helps to do. The Knative will create all those configuration for you and the developer focus only on their development. On top of OpenShift, on the right side, what you see uh, the OpenShift platform, on top of that, you get an OpenShift serverless which is basically provides you the Knative serving, eventing, and function on top of that where you can run your application. Where I can use the serverless? This is the question and there is this, this is the confusion like I, I assume a lot of enterprise customer is also having. Can I use my database workload to run as a serverless? I would say no because database application or the application which requires 24 cross seven and can I use them for a serverless? So my answer would be no, because you have to choose those application and uh, one of the best choice for a serverless application is stateless application. So application with unpredictable bus, a busty number of requests where you do not predict where the nature of the request, what it is coming up, okay? Wherever you want to do A, B kind of testing, can deployment, or something like you, you run a seasonal or a periodic workload. For example, every end of the season or every end of the quarter, you have to generate some report. And I think that's where the serverless will help, uh, will help you to build your application where it uh, utilizes the resource when you need that. Microservices or container want to leverage a serverless so let's see some of the pattern from the serverless so what you see uh, i have a browser and i'm getting a request and i have one container up and running and as soon as my request goes up 
increasing, my container will keep on increasing. I think this is a pattern of K native serving, utilizing a K native serving. I can have a pattern with the eventing pattern where some event is generated, it get triggered to my application and my application scale up and it produce some result. So uh, moving to what is camel K. So I will hand over to Vasha uh, for the camel K. Hello, an audible? Yeah, Vasha. Yes, thank you, Shailendra. Uh, so I'm assuming everyone is aware of Apache camel and how it is helping us to integrate various components till date. Uh, but nowadays, Cloud computing is constantly evaluating uh, from bare metal to container technologies. Uh, the latest trend in this process is the serverless computing model. As Shalinder explained, with the help of Knative, we can make uh, we can uh, we can make a developer-friendly serverless environment. To work Apache Camel with Knative, uh, Apache community developed Camel K. The Camel K is a lightweight integration framework that runs natively on Kubernetes and it uh, specifically designed for serverless and microservice architecture. Using a camel K with OpenShift, serverless and K-native serving, containers are uh, created only as needed and are all auto-scaled based on the load. That means uh, the container count increases with increase in the number of requests and it becomes zero when there is a no request uh, on pod. Uh, it reduces the cost by removing the overhead of server provisioning and maintenance. Uh, it enables a developer to focus on application development instead of building and taking care of the underlying environment. Uh, so Camel K is implemented in Go programming language and uses Kubernetes operator SDK to automatically deploy integrations in the cloud. Uh, this includes automatically creating services routes on OpenShift. So Apache Camel K is a community-driven project. Users can write code in various languages like YAML, Java, XML, Groovy, uh, JavaScript, Kotlin, Java Shell, etc. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, with 300 with the 300 connectors and built-in integration patterns developer can connect to almost everything uh, a flexible uh, everything in a flexible and a scalable way here in this diagram uh, we can see with the help of Kafka topic uh, Kafka topic developer can send messages to any remote endpoint so camel K is not a replacement of uh, Apache camel it's just an exchange or we can say a subset or a sub project of Apache Camel, which runs on Kubernetes and supports uh, serverless feature. Uh, let's see how it works. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the developer can write the route using any supported uh, Camel domain specific language. Here, let's take an example of a route written in Java. The camel KCLI provides a camel uh, command line as the main entry point for running camel K integrations on OpenShift. The developer needs to install a camel KCLI on their local environment. With the help of the camel run command, developer can deploy their integration on Kubernetes or on OpenShift. As soon as the application or integration is deployed on OpenShift, the uh, cluster, the OpenShift cluster or Kubernetes cluster starts the pod. And based on the request, uh, it auto scales. Next, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, using a camel key with OpenShift serverless and Knative, we can manage how components in our uh, system communicate in event-driven architecture uh, for serverless applications. This provides a flexibility and creates efficiency through uh, deployed. Uh, or decoupled relationship between event, event producers and consumers and a published subscriber or we can say event streaming model. When running a camel key in a developer mode, we can, uh, we can make a live updates to integration, uh, integration DSL and view results instantly on OpenShift pod without 
uh, waiting for integration to redeploy. Uh, wherever you make any changes, the pod automatically uh, gets uh, the uh, reloaded, or I can see it gets uh, it destroys the older pod and it creates a new pod, and it we can see the changes. Uh, we can see the changes, whatever changes we are made in DSL. The, uh, when the integration runs for the first time. CamelK builds the integration kit for container images, uh, which downloads all the required Camel modules and adds them to the image class path. It resolves all the dependencies uh, itself when the de developer deploys the route. As explained, uh, based on the incoming request, the pods and resources uh, are used by the application. This uh, provides much faster turnaround time when deploying and redeploying integrations in the cloud. Let's see in a practical way how uh, the camel tool works. Over to you, Shalindra. Thank you. Thanks, Vasa. That was uh, more informative on the camel K. Let's have something on the demo perspective. So uh, how the demo architecture uh, would be. So I have my development machine in which I'm running my camel with the K CLI command. And on my open shift, or it can be any Kubernetes cluster, which is which has two operator running, camel K as well as serverless operator. And the camel CLI it create an integration custom resource. And that custom resource, this is the important part which the camel K operator takes care from the developer. The developer focus developing their code, and with the help of camel CLI. This integration custom resource is created, which will trigger the camel K operator and with the help of serverless operator to spawn up the pods, the running pod or to scale down. The key feature in serverless is scale down to zero. Okay. Let's see some of the live examples. Okay. So how the setup is. So in terms of this is an open shift cluster. I think it would be a latest OpenShift cluster which which I am running. It would be 9.5. Yeah, it would be 9.5. Uh, it can be any Kubernetes cluster which you can have. Okay. And I have installed two operator, and I hope um, the people are aware of the operator. It's it's a way where where you package and deploy your application on any Kubernetes cluster. So it simplifies a lot of things uh, doing installation. So. I have my camel K as well as a serverless operator, which is running. Once you deploy a serverless op uh, operator, you get on the left side, you get a serverless on the console where you can have this serving service revision and the route tab, which is the part of the K native. In terms of uh, deployment from the camel K, I have uh, created an integration pattern, which has already been created. There is no integration created and will use the CLI running on my laptop to create this integration and to create an application. So let's see uh, with a very simple Java application. So I have this Java application, which I have written in sample.java file. It's a language I'm using is Java. And I'm just creating a from and I'm setting a body of hello defcon and printing a log. Okay. And I'm using a platform HTTP. It's a HTTP server where I can use this as a consumer and, and I'm exposing at a at an endpoint slash test. Okay. And how simple is if I have to deploy this in this application, how, what I have to do, I, I will just see if that sample, yes, this application is over here. So I will just have to sorry. Okay. So what I have to do, I will just run camel, run, and sample because I already have my contacts. I have already set up my con contacts of my cluster which I am running. So I have already logged in with that context. Okay. So as soon as I say camel run sample.java, it will start. The integration has been created. If I do OC get IT, the integration, I can see my integration sample has been created up. So what does that integration will create? So let's go back and see. Okay, so if I go to this integration, I have my sample integration created. Is there any running pod? 
yes, I have my sample, my application which is running those camel route. Okay. So how I can identify what are the integration, what does this integration will have? So let's see that part. If I go and see this integration, I can see my YAML file and I can see, okay, the content, this is the whole content of my file, which is there. Okay, perfect. And if you have seen, I just ran from one Java file. It can be any language, which was, I had just explained. It can be a Java, Python, Kotlin, okay. Any file, I don't, I, I don't even have to define the dependencies also. By default, my dependencies, this camel case will identify what are component I'm using and it just uh, define those dependencies. Yes, camel platform HTTP has been defined. Okay, fine. So I have my application running. Now you can see uh, the application just got terminated because there is, there is no load or there is no uh, users of this application, so it will automatically scale down. Now let's go and see what are the serving because as I said, the camel, the serverless will create the k-native service, the serving part, okay? It has created a serving, it has created a serve, revision as well as route. Okay, fine, next, let's, let's go and see, try hit this route. As soon as I hit this route, if I have my running, command prompt or on this next tab, what I will do, I have my operator running. Okay, find the sample. You can see within 14 seconds, it has started up. Okay, and I can do my slash test and I got, oh, hello, def com. Okay, perfect. So this is how uh, it's, it's, this is how it's simply you, I can deploy an application on any Kubernetes cluster without the knowledge of all those configuration which I have to create. Okay. The next important thing is if I have to see the logs, I can always go and say, okay, logs, and I can just give my sample and yes, blah, I can see all my logs. Okay, hello, Camel K. And as soon as I try to hit something, uh, the logs will get printed. Let's see that. And if I will refresh again, yes, I can see hello camel K. And if I have to delete also, it's very simple to delete all those things, all those integration, and I can just delete in one line, and I can just say, okay, hey, camel delete the sample. That's all I have to say. And let's go back and see if, yes, everything has been deleted from the services uh, from the serving part what about the integration the integration itself is deleted the next other feature one of the major feature which which the developer will like runtime in the dev mode because i want to keep on changing my route and i want to see the behavior okay which was explained by uh was in the uh, in our previous slides for example let's say the same thing i would run camel can run java and i will say hyphen hyphen dev okay so I'm running in a dev mode, I'm running in a development mode. And what do you see? Okay, it's it's getting running up. Okay, fine. And it has been started up. Okay, fine. So what is that? What is the difference in the dev mode? The difference in the dev mode is, for example, what I will do, I will start pumping up. So I have some uh, the same, I, I will do this, keep on doing a curl. So I have this load.sh, what it does. It just simply does a curl and it's it's in a for loop so that I can continuously try hitting my application. Okay, fine. So I'm doing that. I'm continuously hitting my application. Now I can see hello devcon. And I, I go back and I change my application and I say okay, hello devcon 2022. And I, I does a control S save as I did uh, because I'm running in a dev mode. Now you can see. The container, the new container has been started up. It's running. And now, without any downtime, without any changes at the application end, I can see, I can start getting up those changes reflecting on the server. Okay. So that is what the advantage I get when I run in a dev mode. Okay. Again, the most important feature, if there is no traffic coming up, automatically it will scale down to zero. Now the next thing is, will it is will it scale up when when my traffic is getting increased? 
yes so what i will do i will come out of this i will reset for that i will have to update some parameter for example let's say with the concurrency now what i am what i am saying okay auto scaling matrix is my concurrency and i am setting it okay auto scaling target to 5 so what it will do it will it will create uh, all those traffic is coming up it's terminating okay it's showing the load okay i just wanted to show this command which i ran which i ran so what i'm doing i'm saying auto scale with a target of five that means five concurrent requests should go to one 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 of the pod and what is that is the concurrency okay fine this is what i have already executed now okay my application it just started up my application if i keep some time if there is no request coming up it will be automatically scaled down uh, that is one of the again i'm repeating one of the feature of serverless scale down to zero now let's go back and see what is the changes it has done if i go in my serving in my yaml so in yaml it would have added an annotation of the same concurrency and five so five is the target and concurrency it has added up so what i will do i will try to pump some load okay so what i have done i have uh, I, I will try to use the same script as well as i will request versa also she also had a similar script running at her end also to execute that uh, script so what will happen we will see uh, instead of starting of one pod there would be a lot of multi pod would be created up so i'm just waiting let's let's it get it terminated uh, completely okay because now it's in a terminated state so that we can see yes now it, it has completely been terminated if i go and see no pod is running that means no resource are getting utilized so what i will do i will i will run the same load test and yes i have executed same load test now you can see now now I can the number of container has increased because I have pumped up a load and because it, it I have reduced the concurrency to five earlier. By default, the concurrency value is 100. I have reduced to five. That means one five request parallel request can be taken up by my container. This is how auto scaling, scaling down to zero. If there is no traffic coming up. I can reduce my traffic. And this is where now I have stopped. So after some time, it would be automatically be scaled down to zero. So it will take some time. It will wait uh, so that uh, it, at least that I think the timeout value is 60 to 90 second. Why you cannot tune? You can, you can tune those value. Those are tunable value, but you do not want to keep it too low because it should not spike with the spike of the traffic it should not fluctuate okay so as soon as the if, if it's not receiving so much traffic it will scale down slowly and you can see all those pods are getting terminated and yeah that's all from from the demo perspective thank you so let's see if uh, there are any question for us so let me stop my sharing here I think, yeah, so how several is react to event means how the end of request to case of failure. Okay, so uh, Vikas has uh, some question on that part. So uh, Vikas, to answer your question, uh, so how the serverless handle the request because from the K-native, uh, I think I have that part also. Uh, so I have one diagram, but I think it's not there. So one diagram will definitely help you out uh, if you're able to see uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. So what I have done, argue, but you have just uh, 30 seconds left. So please uh, quickly respond to the question, <laughs> if you may. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think uh, this is a uh, let me let me take this one. Okay. So I will quickly go through. Uh, I can we can discuss more on this part. So activator activator is where you will have the buffer. So this is a k-native part where all the controller all the requests which are coming up the activator will keep my buffer okay. 
so that's that's how uh, you get all those buffer requests get buffer when your application is scaled out to zero um, i think okay. I, i think it's uh, the time is so, up so i think we are going to be available uh, in the around so i think we can have those questions thank you thank you very much uh, for your presentation uh, if you would like to discuss anything uh, further please uh, uh, go to the work adventure uh, it's a virtual platform where you, where you can interact with, with each other so feel free to go there and uh, uh, enjoy the discussion 